everybody that walks through the door of a late night bar and a nightclub, they all stand there with a potential weapon in their hand. And the injuries that they you know, can cause are horrendous. Um, so I am amazed that they are actually still you. I don't want to be reminded of that night. It's just a constant thing in my face. I can't look in the mirror without seeing it. By removing glass from a venue, you or you naturally will make that venue safe. They've been produced that well over the last couple of years that you can't even tell that it's plastic until it's empty and it's light. So since the introduction of polycarbonates in Hull, we have seen a dramatic drop in the incidence of injuries from one, one every week to none for the past two to three years. They're not having to replace glassware. They're not having staff off injured um, where they've cut themselves on glass. Their customers are not getting injured. Uh, their dance floors are not getting cut up with broken glass. Uh, and uh, some of them have actually got a reduction on their insurance premium because they've gone polycarbonate. In bars like I've been to where these things happen, I think it's ridiculous that they can still use glasses. The UK's pubs and clubs form a major part of a thriving multi-million pound nighttime leisure industry, but it comes at a price. Each year more than one million people become victims of violent attacks committed by people under the influence of alcohol. By far the most disfiguring are those where the victim is attacked by someone using glass. Conservative estimates put the annual cost of glass related violence at a hundred million pounds. That's £100 million funded by UK taxpayers to cover the treatment, investigation and prosecution of these horrific incidents. But what of the cost to the victim? Police officer Hen Stavely Brown was attacked as she entered a pub following reports of a bar fight. A thug threw a glass at her head with such force she was rendered unconscious. She describes how it changed her life forever. Um, I'd taken um, about five steps into the bar towards the the, uh, the bar staff and uh, I could hear a, a whooshing sound coming towards me and uh, what felt like a lump of concrete being slammed into the side of my face. Um, I don't remember anything until sort of being on the floor on my knees um, and ha having my hands sort of cupping cupping my face. I brought my hands down, I remember looking at my hands and thinking there's blood coming from my face. My eye has been damaged to the point that I have a scarred retina. Um, it's aged my viscular jelly to the point that I could wake up one morning and um, my, my vision will have gone. Um, I have a, a constant shadow in my left eye and at night um, I get white strobe lights uh, in, in my eye. Student Alexandra Homayunpur was out in a pub with her boyfriend celebrating New Year when a gang of men attacked them, leaving her with a shard of glass embedded in her nose. She tells how the attack left her self-confidence at rock bottom. I just started to panic, like, I didn't know what was happening. Blood was, like, so much blood was streaming everywhere, and it, I was just completely scared because no one had told me what was happening. I thought I'd been punched in the nose, and then my boyfriend said I had a little cut. And, well, when he said I had a little cut, I thought it might be a little shard of glass or something that splintered off. When my dad said it actually cut through my nose, then it must have been a pretty big glass. And then the doctors confirmed that and said that it had to be a big chunk with some force behind it. I cried pretty much on and off for, like, the next week or so. Um, I, I didn't know what was going to happen with the scar. I googled just about every site possible. I googled plastic surgery, scar revision things that had happened similar to this um, and I knew that I was going to end up with a scar <laughs> that one's after I'd been out and I've got all my makeup on and if you go like that I look pretty much normal you go like that and it's disgusting and bloody and it's horrible no one should have to go through what I went through I was just on a night out having fun and it was used as a weapon. It's almost as if you like giving out knives at a bar because they can be smashed and be as sharp as knives. It's just stupid. 
One man who has witnessed the impact glassing injuries can have on victims more than most is eye surgeon Craig Burnett. He was instrumental in persuading Hull city centre bars and nightclubs to make the switch from glass to polycarbonate, a move which has saved the NHS £7 million a year and prevented scores of sickening injuries. I think I probably hold the UK record for the most number of glassing eye injuries. Um, in 2007 I had one every single week on call for the year, so that's at least one usually young male glass in the eye or eyelid. If they get to the level of the consultant ophthalmic surgeon, there's a serious eye injury involved or a serious facial and eyelid injury that requires an operation. So I might even be only seeing the tip of the iceberg. So there may be many, many, many more injuries than what I've actually personally seen. But the ones I've been involved with have been horrific. Sometimes the, the injuries are devastating to the patient, to their family, to their careers, to their future prospects for work, for marriage, if they have a disfigurement, um, the repercussions are, are very deep. I can't think of a, a worse injury that you could have than someone sticking a jagged, sharp, broken bottle or glass through your eye. Since the introduction of that campaign of introducing plastic pint glasses and wine glasses in pubs and clubs in the city centre where huge amounts of alcohol are consumed, well, I've seen no injuries in the past three years. Marjorie Golding's son Blake was attacked by a glass-wielding thug as he came to the aid of a female colleague at the bar where he worked as a doorman. He was left needing more than 50 stitches. She has witnessed at first hand the psychological impact the attack had on Blake. She describes the scene that greeted her as her son was brought into the hospital. It was horrific. I have never seen. Uh, it, it was just complete carnage. There was just blood everywhere. Um, there was a nurse holding my son's face together. We were told it was touch and go. Uh, he'd lost four pints of blood uh, and they needed to get him into surgery, but they needed to try and stabilise him first. I can't believe that we are still selling um, drinks, a mind-altering substance, um, in what is potentially a weapon. A, a shard of glass will cut just as deeply as, as, a, as a knife. You know, it, it inflicts the same sort of wounds as a knife. And statistically, glass injuries are right up there with, with, with knife attacks, with knife injuries. Marjorie now fronts the POP campaign, which is spearheading calls for all city centre pubs and clubs to introduce polycarbonates. I came across these polycarbonate glasses and I also saw that there was a PET version of, of the alcohol in bottles, sold in bottles. I was quite astounded that this was available and, and wasn't really being promoted on a major scale. Community Safety Sergeant Mark Worthington was inspired to try and introduce polycarbonates in Northampton after attending a conference in 2006 when Marjorie Golding was speaking. He explains how he swiftly overcame his own reservations about the use of polycarbonates and the impact their introduction has had on alcohol-induced violence. There's one instance where a chap had been glassed in a nightclub. Um, he'd actually made his way from the town centre, um, but we followed this trail of blood and we found him a few hundred yards away from the venue where he'd been attacked and he got quite a serious wound in his neck. Uh, obviously we rendered first aid and called the ambulance and everything and he was taken off and dealt with. But had there been polycarbonates in that venue, then that incident wouldn't have occurred. After I'd been to a few venues that had been serving beer in, in polycarbonates, I thought, well, after that initial aspect of picking the glass up and thinking, yeah, it's not glass, you, don't, you tend not to, to notice it. It's just like any other drinking vessel. Most of the town centre venues now have polycarbonate in some form. Um, the biggest ones use them all the time. Others will use them at peak periods where they have sporting events they're going to screen, or if they've got a beer garden, they'll use them in the beer garden. We know that people react to alcohol in different ways. Um, some just go to sleep, some get punchy and some get violent. Uh, and it's those people that get violent that we, we, we need to look at and how we're going to reduce the risk of them seriously injuring someone. And if you got hit by one of these on the head, you know, there's a good chance you might get a split injury, but you're not going to get those horrific lacerations that we've seen with, with people. So, you know, the, the product works and it works really well. 
After running a hugely successful trial of polycarbonates in Blackpool, Sergeant Richard Hurt commissioned research to compare and contrast the use of both glass and polycarbonates in city centre pubs. He instigated a second larger scale trial across three towns in Lancashire to gain an objective view both from a policing and a licensee's perspective. The feedback has been very, very positive. They've identified as a result of changing to polycarbonates the fact that they've not had a reduction in revenue. They've seen a reduction in woundings. The staff like them because they're not getting injured as often. They're not uh, been exposed to glass cuts through when they're cleaning the glasses. So it's a win-win for everybody. We as the police and our partners through through uh, the health service, through the criminal justice system, are seeing a, a reduction in investment required for, for the treatment, for the post-operative care, through a and admissions, through the policing aspect, through the criminal justice system. But the venues themselves are saying that they're seeing a cost reduction because they're not having to replace the stocks as often. The public don't mind drinking from them. They've not had any negative comments at all from members of the public. The venues themselves are not getting tainted as problematic because it's now seen generally as the norm that venues in town centres will use polycarbonates. Um, and and, the, and generally the licensees are very, very proactive and, and, and want to want to reduce crime and disorder and, and polycarbonates are seen as a key in that reduction in crime and disorder. Another city centre which has successfully made the switch is Sheffield. Alison Newbold, manager of the renowned Leadmill nightclub, explains how painless making the switch away from glass has been and describes the unforeseen benefits of running the polycarbonates establishment. Um, people used to come quite regular with uh, cut feet. Um, they've got either you know flimsy shoes on or um, the dolly shoes that are all in fashion, um, and obviously the glass shoes to go straight through, straight through the shoes. Um, you know, and we've had quite a few people cut the feet. We've had as many as ten cut the feet in one night. It, it was an extremely busy night, um, but you know, ten or twelve people all cut the feet. Um, something as simple as somebody puts the, the glass down on the bar a little bit too heavy-handed, um, and it shatters. Uh, next customer comes along, a little bit of shard of glass is stuck in the in the trim, um, and they they cut the fingers as well. <laughs> Here, we don't really seem to have had that much of a problem with it, and I think it helps with it being introduced citywide all at the same time, um, because people know that, you know, they expect that now when they come out and they don't even mention it. Um, but, you know, they've been produced that well over the last couple of years that you can't even tell that it's plastic until it's empty and it's light. Um, you know, they're that tough that you, you can't even tell. Um, and they've got the nucleator in the bottom, which makes it keep its its fizz, which is what people like. Well, the, the polycarbonate sort of glasses that, you know, that uh, have, are now coming out onto the market, I think are a great idea. They can't be smashed, they can't be used as a weapon. And I think if people got used to using those sorts of things, it's not going to be at the front of their mind to first them to smash or chuck or whatever. Alcohol is a depressant. It's a mind-changing substance. Um, and you're serving it up in what could be a weapon. The cost of an injury from a glassing eye injury is, is huge. It goes into hundreds of thousands of pounds per, per patient, per victim. And the financial argument for introducing polycarbonates is very strong. They're probably a couple of pounds more expensive a box, but they do last a lot longer. And they don't take as much cleaning either. It's the hidden impact it has. Physical scars potentially can heal and you can get plastic surgery for them but it's the physical and psychological impact it has on the victims. I've come from being such a confident person, I was probably too confident and big headed and it just knocked me completely back. The technology is out there, the product is out there, um, I know from personal experience what it feels like to go through and still be going through what we have endured. There are thousands of other victims out there. Our kids are our whole reason for, for, for being. Um, and I can't think that somebody nearly took him away from me that night.